Hi, Danielle here with Scrapbook Maven. I have another Graphic 45 design team project to share with you today. This is using the gorgeous Graphic 45 Rare Oddities collection. And I've made a little trifold brag book. I don't take a ton of photos um, for Halloween, so I thought this would be a really cute way to um, house the few photos that I do take and double as a beautiful um, Halloween decor piece for my house. So um, if you're interested in making something similar to this, um, I'll share with you at the end of the video how to construct your own little trifold book. So for the cover here, I used some Petaloo flowers and I fussy cut out these paisley images from the collection. I mean, this collection is just chock full of amazing images to cut out. Um, so if you're into fussy cutting, this is fabulous. But they also have the little four by six cutouts um, like I put here um, that have just gorgeous uh, imagery on there. I did use some chipboard pieces and on the inside I did use some of the cardstock stickers. So like I said, gorgeous 4x6 pieces to cut out and uh, so use one on the back and then it opens up right here. With the beautiful May Arts ribbon gorgeous. I love this ribbon. I love stripes, so I had to add that. So it opens up like this first, and we have another of the gorgeous 4x6 cut aparts, and I made it into like a little door, have my little ring uh, fastener from Tim Holtz with a cute little skeleton charm, if you can see that. It's just super cute, and then it just opens up, so we have room for two 4x6 photos, and then it opens up again. And we have two waterfall pieces right here. I did one portrait. And then uh, the stickers, I used the Tim Holtz uh, tiny tabs and tags, one of the dies there to create the tabs. And I put the little stickers on here from the collection that spells out eek, and this one spells out boo. But then, so we just have a, lots of little waterfall pieces here, one of the three by four cut aparts. So I have lots of room for photos here. Use my silhouette for the um, spider webs. Thought that looked really cute. And then um, another petaloo flower and some seam binding and some green twine. Use one of those gorgeous four by six cutouts um, as a focal image here. Just loved it. If I wanted, if I was a huge picture taker during Halloween, I could again make another one of these doors here or flaps for this page right here to get some more photos in. And then here I have my little um, landscape uh, waterfall and so I have lots of room for even more photos. I use a lot of the, four, the three by four cut out, cutouts to um, add some images to the waterfalls and make it look really cute since I won't have tons of photos. And then I had a little, left it open for a little pocket here for some more journaling. Another one of the Tim Holtz charms right here that says Fright. Just super cute, easy, um, easy construction. So if you're interested in making something like this, I think it'd be a great um, gift. It doesn't have to be Halloween. Any of the, especially the Graphic 45 collections because it has all the 4x6 and the 3x4 um, cut aparts or any collection that has those. This is a great little um, book to make. Super fast, super easy, great gift. I love how I can stand it up and I can have it as my um, a little decoration in my house for Halloween and then um, holds my photos as well. So I hope you guys like this. If you're interested in constructing one of your own, keep watching and I'll share with you how I made this. Okay, so you are gonna need a few things for this um, tutorial. I'll have a more detailed list of supplies and measurements for you on my blog. So I'll have a link to that in my description box if you're interested in that and you can print it out from there as well. You're gonna need some medium weight chipboard pieces and um, two will be five by seven, one will be four and three quarters by seven, and then you'll have two spine pieces that measure, uh, one that measures three and a quarter by seven and one that measures half inch by seven. And of course you can always um, play with the numbers, the measurements, so it suits your needs. But I find I found that these um, worked really well for me and for the collection 
the Rare Oddities collection with their cut aparts. And I didn't use a whole lot of dimensional things, so it worked out really well with my spine sizes. So this paper here, I used two pieces of um, Articles of Antiquity for the back cover, and for the interior piece, I used Charmed, I'm sure. And so I cut, had two pieces and adhered them together to make the length that I needed. And so what I did was just use some score tape to um, adhere the pieces together, just like this. And here I'm like paranoid that I'm gonna have one upside down and uh, so I checked it several times before adhering it. It would have been smart if I just would have done it the other side facing me. So that's how I adhere the two pieces together. I cut the charmed, I'm sure, paper, as you can notice, um, so that the lines were horizontal and that'll make it a lot easier when adding the waterfalls to the um, paper. So my lines are, will already um, kind of be there. I just have to follow them. And so here I'm just going to lay out the chipboard pieces and there I'm pointing out my line where my, I adhered the papers together. And I want to make sure that I get my chipboard pieces to cover that line. I don't like the seam to be near the spine. Um, because I feel like it adds extra bulk to where it needs to fold nicely and it makes it kind of hard. So I have all my pieces in line, my five by seven on the left and then my larger spine piece followed by my other five by seven, then my, my smaller half inch spine and then my smaller four and three quarter by seven inch piece on the far right. And I'm just moving everything over so that it um, is away from the seam the gaps away from the seam and my chipboard piece there in the middle will kind of cover it up and then I'm using that ruler below as my guide so that everything gets nice and lined up and nothing's crooked. So I kind of like how it's positioned and I'm just going to remove the score tape that I pre-adhered um, and I usually add it as I go but I thought for the tutorial it'd go faster if I, I added the score tape ahead of time and so I added some score tape in the middle where I don't necessarily need it um, if you want to add pockets behind your waterfalls you're not going to want to put score tape in the middle of your chipboard pieces and I'll figure that out later but here I'm using a little shim it's uh, two pieces of scrap uh, chipboard that I've glued together and that's going to help me with the spacing of my pieces. So I'm going to use that as my guide. And it ends up being about an eighth of an inch um, spacing, which works out nicely. And so I'm just going to use my ruler, since I already have it th there at the bottom, I'm going to use my ruler as um, my guide for the spacing. So I won't need the shim. Just uh, remove the backing from the score tape and adhere all the pieces. Then removing the ruler so I can get it at the um, get it so it shows me the eighth inch spacing, and then I'm just going to adhere my four and three quarter by seven inch piece down. And I'm just going to bend it a little bit, make sure I like that spacing. Help ease the paper into bending so you don't um, tear it or break it. And then I'm just going to finish adhering the rest of the pieces down, my three quarter inch spine piece. And then the final piece. And 
then use your bone folder just make sure everything is adhered really nice and then I'm just going to help things bend a little bit get the paper used to bending and now we're just going to take our scissors and we're going to trim off the corners of our cover you're going to want to leave room so that it will fold over and cover your chipboard so it's better to err on the side of leaving more than you need you don't want to cut off too much and then when you bend over your full your paper over and your corner is exposed that's the worst so you always err on the side of um, cutting off too little so I am going to start um, bending the paper over and using my nail but I will get my bone folder to help fold it over I just want to make sure that it folds over really nice and tight before I remove any of the score tape bending it over a little bit at a time it really helps um, break the fibers in of the paper so we don't kind of shock it and have it tear on us because it is really nice thick paper There, I'm just going to start removing the score tape and folding over the papers here. I added the vertical score tape. I'm just going to pull back just enough. I tend to get myself in trouble if I have too much score tape uh, exposed without the backing. Um, I have a knack for putting papers down onto um, score tape and then I have to rip it off and ruin my score tape. So I'm just pulling it back just enough that I can fold over the um, cover paper and then fold it over nice and tight and put that score tape backing back before I get in trouble And then I'm going to tuck that little corner piece in there so that when I fold over that right side, it folds over nicely. But I'm just going to do the opposite side first. Remove all the score tape. Peel the vertical pieces just enough. And then fold over the paper nice and tightly. Burnish it with your bone folder. Make sure everything's adhered really nicely. And then we'll go for the um, smaller sides. Tuck in those papers, the, the corners really well. Use your bone folder if you need to. So it wraps around that corner really nice. And then fold that paper over burnish it really well and then you'll have a really clean neat corner as you can see and we're going to do the same to the other side and then we're just going to get our bone folder there in the groove there and work it in and, and bend it nice and slow and easy so that we don't uh, break the fibers of the um, the paper. We just want to kind of stretch the fibers, ease it in, so it, it folds really nice, and we have a really nice um, cover. So that folds really nice. Fun, fun. We have a fun little cover now for our book, and now we're going to get to the inside. <clears throat> what you can do is use black cardstock. I'm going to use that charmed, I'm sure, paper that I've adhered together. But you can use the uh, cardstock, plain cardstock if you want. Adhere that all. Get your glue on there and um, get your interior piece on. That way you can use your cardstock, your design paper, and just cut it into the panels to fit the individual, um, the 5x7 chipboard. 
and then put, add your waterfalls that way. I'm going to use it as a um, the whole paper as my interior. I think it looks really nice and cohesive to have the whole interior be the same. And so I'm just going to mark with a pencil um, where my panels are, my five by seven and four and three quarters panels are, so I can get my waterfalls centered. And I'm going to mark it in just an eighth of an inch in in my panels because I have an eighth of an inch border around uh, my cover. <clears throat> so I've marked my panels. That way I can center my waterfalls like I've said. And you'll need four of these pieces of cardstock for your, your waterfalls. Measures four and five eighths by three and a quarter, scored at four and a quarter. And then cut and taper your flaps. So there's my four. I've already adhered one of my three by four cutouts from the Rare Oddities paper. I actually forgot to put the magnet underneath that. So I'm gonna end up doing surgery later on to add my magnet. But I'm going to use my ruler here and it's gonna mark off where my panel is. And that's gonna help me center my waterfall here. And the beauty of having the Charmed I'm Sure paper and cutting it so that the lines are horizontal is that it, it just lays out for me where I'm gonna put my flaps, where my, I'm gonna put my waterfall. So there, there's my little lines already um, there for me. So all I have to do is figure out where in the center I want it, how far up I want it, and I think I like that. So I'm just going to mark it with a pencil. So I've marked it, and now I'm just going to cut the slit with an X-Acto knife and the metal side of my ruler. And always make sure that your flap is going to fit in the cut that you made so that fits nicely. So now I'm just going to use that first cut as my guide for my next three waterfall pieces. And because I have the lines on the paper, I this particular paper is the lines are spaced perfectly for my waterfall. I love the spacing on it. So I'm just using that as my guide to um, for my next pieces. And so then all I have to do is cut the openings. And then, like I said, test your openings, make sure they fit nicely and they do. So now I'm going to get my wet adhesive and glue my waterfall in place. I do like the wet adhesive. That allows me to, um, it leaves me a little wiggle room so that I can adjust where I have my flap in case I put it in crooked. And so when I put my subsequent pieces in, I can line them up with the piece before. With the score tape, I've had bad luck that um, I won't get it in right the first time and then it'll stick really well to the paper and trying to get it out, I end up tearing my design paper. So wet adhesive is my best friend for waterfalls. Get it in, get the uh, excess off, and line it up with the first waterfall flap. Burnish it really well. And then we just put our next two flaps in with the wet adhesive. Close them up, make sure that they're aligned nicely. Make sure you get all the excess glue out. And I'm just going to finish putting my little tabs on my flaps 
It's the Tim Holtz Tiny Tabs and Tags die. It's really, um, really cute little circle tabs on uh, as one of the dies on there. And they fit the Graphic 45 cardstock sticker, circle stickers perfectly. So that's what I did. And here, um, you're going to want to put your magnet underneath your 3x4, unlike what I did. And um, put it in the center there. Um, don't put it on the tab. You're going to want it in the center of your 3 by uh, the bottom of your 3 by 4 and then one's going to go on the back of your paper. Or if you don't want to use magnets, you can use the Graphic 45 chipboard pieces. They work really well. If you've seen my other albums, I really like to use the um, chipboard pieces as my um, page tabs, I guess you'd call them. And then the Graphic 45 brads work really well with the chipboard pieces because the chipboard pieces do have large holes and the larger brads of Graphic 45 fit perfect with them. So I think the long one looks really good with that, but I'm going to end up using the magnets for my flaps. And then we'll just work on the center piece here. I end up having just a four by six cutout as my focal point. So I'm just gonna have a four and a quarter by six and a quarter piece of cardstock cut. And that'll be my mat for my four by six cutout. If you want to have more um, photos, then you can always make it a flap. You can put another waterfall in there if you like, or you can double the four and a quarter by six and a quarter. So maybe make it um, eight and a half by six and a quarter, fold it in half, and then you can have um, a little door or flap for more photos. I'm just going to um, adhere it just like that. Make sure it's centered where I marked it earlier so that I just have a nice little focal image since I don't take a whole lot of photos um, for Halloween. So I'm just going to get that glued in. And I can't really see my markings very well with the glare of the light on the pencil. So um, I'm just going to bring back my cover and see where my panel is, my middle panel, so that I can make sure that I get my um, cut out nicely centered. And I do like my wet glue. I just try and be very sparing with it so it doesn't create too much um, wetness and um, any buckling or bubbling. And there again, the lines on the paper really help you out when you cut up horizontal like that. And uh, I'm able to line it up nicely. And so for my waterfall here on the landscape waterfall, you need pieces that measure three and five eighths by four and a quarter. And you're gonna score it there at, four, at three and a quarter and taper those ends right there on the flap. And we're just gonna bend all our little flaps over, get them ready to go. And you just gotta figure out where you want it. I am going to bring it down just a little lower than the one on the left, the far left, so that I can make it into a pocket and have a little tag sticking out um, above it. And so I'm going to mark where I want my uh, waterfall to be and where each of the um, we, each of the pieces are going to go. And then I'm just going to cut the openings. Again, got to love the horizontal lines. And then I'm just going to test to make sure that each of the flaps fit and they don't. So I have to go back and cut them a little longer. And again, got to cut it again. And now we're just going to add the wet glue and add my waterfall. I'm going to quickly erase my pencil lines while I'm thinking about it. And add the next waterfall piece. Make sure it's lined up with the one 
previous and keep going until they're all done. Making sure to always lift up your flap and make sure any excess glue is removed so that your flap isn't um, going to get stuck. So I'm going to remember my magnet this time. I'm going to add it to my front flap and I'm going to add that little frog 3x4 cutout right on there. Super cute. And then I'm going to re remove my score tape, but here I just realized that I added score tape to the middle, which is going to interfere with my pocket that I want to do. See that opening there? It, it's a little cute pocket, so that's a bad idea right there for that score tape to be there. So I'm going to remove it to the, from the other places, and I'm going to end up cutting a scrap piece of cardstock. Um, to cover up the score tape that I put there on the right side because I really do want a little pocket for a journaling tag there on the right. So I'm just going to adhere that real quick. Cover up my mistake. And then I'm just going to flip that interior piece over and I'm going to add score tape all around the perimeter of it just to make sure everything sticks nicely um, on the edges. And I'll fill in with my wet glue. As you can see on my um, on the left side that I added some cardstock to my waterfall flaps, but that was a bad idea. I don't usually do that, so I don't know why I did it this time. So don't do that. It can interfere with inserting your, your tag into the pocket. And there I'm just making sure to leave that space glue free, as I pointed out, so that we do have an opening for our little tag. Added um, the glue everywhere else. And now I'm just going to line everything up and insert my inside piece and everything's nice and attached. Make sure everything's nicely uh, burnished. Get my bone folder out and um, make sure everything's glued nicely. And help your spine uh, pieces bend by inserting your bone folder into each of the creases and bending it. There I put my little journaling tag in, made sure it fit really nice and cute. And of course you're going to want to add your magnet behind there. But I didn't want it to interfere with my pocket so I'm going to add the magnet underneath this other 3x4 cutout. And that'll fix that problem and then we'll add another extra element to the, um, the book and look really cute. And so it, it fits really nice. And then I just have to add some magnets to the left side waterfall that I forgot and that won't be a problem. But there you have it. There's your cute little brag book and you're ready to decorate it with all sorts of fun spooky Halloween-y things, or if you're using a different um, collection, um, have fun decorating it. It's just a really fun little quick album to make. And as you can see, it was really simple, especially if you use a lined paper like I did with the Charmed, I'm sure. And then just bend it over, and then all you have to do is decorate your outside, and you're going to have a fun little book. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching everyone. See you in the next video. Bye.